the titanium elastic nails, or as the French called them, ESIN, Elastic Stable Intermedullary Nailing, had been very popular in France and had spread throughout Europe in the 1970s and 80s. There wasn't a distributor for it in the United States, so it wasn't really, the device wasn't available at most centers. And then it suddenly became available in the mid-90s and people started trying it and all of a sudden they could mobilize kids, minimal incisions, um, much lower risk of complications, not the, com not the refractures and that and the kind of problems we saw with external fixation. We saw sort of a, uh, a wave, a changing wave um, in the late 90s, around 2000 is when people really moved quickly away from external fixation, away from solid nailing using the titanium nails. Now this picture shows the incision as marked with the line where our physis is. This is your entry point for the nail. The drill for the nail has been passed through the incision and down to the femur. It's very important not to do any dissection near the growth plate nor any dissection posterior to the femur where the neurovascular structures are. These next images show the uh, nail turning the corner, abutting against the cortex and then eventually advancing up the canal. You'll definitely reach a point where you feel some resistance as the nail abuts up against the cortex. And then these next pictures show us uh, starting the other nail. And again, dropping our hand down, drilling a very oblique drill hole, passing the second nail up into position. Here we've checked a lateral view to make sure that uh, we're in good position with that nail. And we bring it right up to the fracture site. And then again, carefully bringing the second nail across to be certain that uh, you don't bang into a cortex or knock off an occult butterfly fragment. Again, we've used a little external pressure with a, uh, a large mallet uh, to align the fracture and the second nail is passed into the proximal fragment without difficulty.